even though my talk's title rather boldly declares that I would be on a mission in search of the intelligent museum, I have to say that I've never seen myself as a museum person. I can recall from my youth that the art museum experience was always too much of an intangible experience for me. So there were artworks, they were hanging on the walls, or they were put on pedestals. But in almost any case, there were those captions saying, don't touch. So it was not very easy for me to engage with it. I didn't get any access. Later, I had my first encounters with media arts and participatory artistic practice. And this was like a revelation to me. And today, here I stand. I'm a media artist. I quite often use state-of-the-art technologies in many different configurations in artistic projects. I like to observe how technology can change the societal status quo and how it can unfold disruptive potentials. And basically, that's at what I'm doing at the ZKM Center for Art and Media, where I currently work. I work at artistic research and development. The ZKM is a rather unique institution, which is operating at the intersection of art, sciences, technology, and society. Our core mission is to perpetuate the classical arts into the digital age. And we are not only doing this by means of artistically producing and developing, but we also have a world-class museum and we have a top-notch art and museum educational squad. And together with these people, I did have some vivid exchange and we were discussing the recent developments in artificial intelligence. Because we were observing in how far our society gradually transforms into a data-driven society, that's not least due to the advent of the artificial intelligence technologies. Okay, so now you might think, oh, AI, that's something for the IT people or for the robotics engineers um, or for the data scientists. But I think it's about time that we make it a matter of public concern. Those technologies, they are permanently surrounding us in the digital age, while some of those might actually get considered your everyday little helpers, just like text translation tools, auto transcription, or maybe those handy recommendation systems on YouTube, Netflix, Spotify, etc. Some other technologies might actually fuel your everyday dystopia. And among these are surveillance technologies, deep fakes, and politically motivated opinion robots. So, how can we inspire and encourage people to critically engage with artificial intelligence? And together with the German Museum in Munich, we made a project out of it. The Intelligent Museum. That's a four-year spanning project, which we kicked off earlier this year. It is generously funded by the German Federal Foundation of Culture, and its overall goal is to experimentally test out a new museum experience. We would like to open up a big field of experimentation for art, science, technology and public discourse. And with this project we are drawing on an expanded concept of the museum. So, what is the role and the function of a museum today? Is it collecting? preserving, exhibiting, maybe all three, but we believe that it is about time that we expand beyond that scope. So, to us, museums are social spaces. Those are open community places. People come together, they meet, they exchange ideas, and they can critically reflect on those ideas. So I think this already does sound like the ideal breeding ground for public discourse to appear. 
and we would like to enable our visitors to being able to broadly discuss AI topics. We would, on the one hand, like them to discuss the chances and the potentials, but also the risks and the possible ethical implications. And we will hook them up with artists, scientists, technologists, and then together we can also tackle the big questions. How might AI change the concept of work in the future? How might it affect democracy? How could it change um, generally our concepts of what the future might look like? So, as we are um, also strongly believing that museums should be catalysts to the people's creativity, curiosity and their eagerness to learn, we will have experiential presentations. We are not the spokespeople of the industry, but there will be AI technology sandboxes. There will be lots of hands-on demonstrations. We want that the visitors can get their hands on the technologies, simply trying them out so that they can then discuss them properly. And as we are an art institution, there obviously will be artistic presentations. So uh, the project will be quite open to a whole variety of international artists who work in many different genres. This could be interactive installations. This is a very specific art form which draws on uh, the activities of the visitors. So it is a responsive art form. It adapts to the people's feedback. But uh, there will also be data visualizations and sonifications, generative video, device art, web-based art, you name it. We are interested in the questions those artists might evoke. We are interested in how far they expand or extend and stress the notion we have on artificial intelligence. So they will be given from us basically money and time to being able to elaborate on their ideas and to actually producing an artwork. We will share our knowledge and our resources with them and we will help them out with the implementation. And if we don't come any further, then we will just point them to the smart people who might know better than we do. <laughs> we also believe that um, artists can be very strong catalysts to marginalized voices. And a museum should be a very inclusive space. Those are polyphonic places where every voice should be heard and where everybody should have equal access. So we asked ourselves the question, could we use artificial intelligence to make the museum experience more inclusive and more accessible? So we developed that idea. We successively want to um, build a cognitive system. The museum should get transformed into a cognitive system. So what is a cognitive system? This is a digital system which has interfaces between the physical surroundings on the one hand and the visitors on the other hand. So it has sensors which can basically determine things based on how people react. So the intelligent museum, in the end it will be capable of exchanging information, auditory information, visual information and textual information. So it will become like some sort of conversation or dialogue between the museum and the visitors. And for this, we will experimentally test out a whole variety of new interfacing strategies. So we will experiment, for instance, with the conversational user interfaces, like chatbots, or we will have voice interfaces. But there will also be interfaces which rely on computer vision technology. This is a kind of technology which preoccupies itself with the way machines do th see things, how they perceive the environment. Okay, so what's the aim? The aim is to create functional applications which can increase accessibility. So, I give you an example. At the moment, we preoccupy ourselves with so-called spoken language identification. So now I would like you to picture the following scenario. 
there is a group of, let's say, Spanish-speaking people entering the museum space and then starting to discuss and converse in front of an artwork. But this particular artwork will be capable to detect the spoken languages out of the language of the visitors. And it can adapt to this. And it can then automatically translate a given digital label into the corresponding language. So you see, all of a sudden, the language barrier decreases and the accessibility increases. We consider the Intelligent Museum a learning experiment. So it is an experiment in collaborative learning. We would like to give the visitors the possibility to learn from the museum, but the museum should also learn from its visitors. And then, collaboratively, they can become more competent and more knowledgeable together. Speaking of accessibility, for this project, we will have a very strict open source and open access publishing policy. We will follow the slogan given by the Free Software Foundation, which goes like, public money, public code, which basically means that if there is some public funding involved, the code should be made freely accessible to the general public. And this we will do. All codes which we will develop as part of this project will get uploaded onto an open code repository. And this will be done for at least three reasons. For quite obvious reasons, we want international developers, communities to being able to participate in this project. They should be able to help us out, they should make propositions and suggestions or simply draw on the codes we already elaborated. Secondly, we want to work very transparent. Because especially when you work in the field of data-driven applications which rely on big data sets, you must secure that all voices are equally represented in these data sets. You would like to avoid data bias. Last but not least, we strongly desire to have a reuse perspective for this project. So we would like to give the others the opportunity to draw on our findings. Nobody needs to do the same mistakes we might have done during this project. Everybody can draw on this. So this um, should go out to all the uh, institutions, to the software developers, the artists. Everybody can make use of it. And this is a way of reaching sustainability. The Intelligent Museum, in the end, we think that it will transform us and it will transform the museum experience. It will become more like a dialogue, more like a conversation. So I cordially invite you to join us and to participate, and together we can then collectively make a quantum leap into the future. Thank you.